Introduction. When you think of an emotional black woman, the first thing that probably comes to mind is a woman who is angry, bitter, and raging at the whole world. Either that, or our minds draw up this vision of a black woman crying pitifully. We don't see emotions in a positive light, and unfortunately, I can't say it's our fault. A few years ago, I shared the same sentiments. Sadly, the messages around me reinforced this imagery I had of what an emotional black woman is supposed to look like. I thought crying was the ultimate expression of a woman's emotions, and so do a lot of people, which is why we strongly try to deter our black brothers from finding emotional expressions in their tears. We tell them it is womanly and therefore weak. As we fight for gender equality in today's climate, the freedom to cry freely is gradually being frowned upon as well. We have prospective life partners saying things like they, quote, don't like their women emotionally weak, end quote. And when you transfer that in regular speak, they mean they don't want a woman who is tearful or expresses herself in any of the ways I mentioned earlier. The problem is not people having standards for what they want in a potential partner. The problem is the narrow perspective we have when it comes to the colorful range of human emotions and feelings that we assign emotions to specific genders or dictate how each of us should react to these emotions. And worse still, we made it the general definition of what it means to be an emotional black woman. This is the reason I felt inspired to write this book. I am hoping that at the end of the book, that picture of who we think an emotional black woman is will change. I do this with the expectation that certain important concepts that we have assigned negative labels to will be seen in a new light and will empower us with the knowledge to help us thrive and grow in our respective endeavors. At the end of this chapter, I want you to understand what emotional health is and what it means to care for your emotional health. The idea that a strong black woman is someone who has succeeded in shutting down her emotions or someone who does not display emotions in ways that are considered weak should be burned and destroyed forever. That narrative is costing us our peace and happiness. We need to care about our emotions. What is emotional self-care? I came across the word self-care in a Hollywood movie. The way it was sold to me was basically taking a bath in a tub, surrounded by candles, petals, and all that stuff, which is nice, but far from the whole truth. Self-care is way more than having a nice soak in the tub. It is your attitude towards yourself. It is in your interactions with other people. It is in the words you silently say to yourself when no one else is listening. When your emotional health is neglected, your inner critic assumes control by default. The voice becomes the loudest, and if you do not consciously check your inner critic, the message will be negative, and that negativity will consume you. A quick internet search tells us that emotional self-care is a conscious effort towards identifying and nurturing your true feelings your conscious inner state, and your emotional intellect. If I was going to phrase this in a cool way, I would say emotional self-care is the quaint art of giving a F star star K. As women, we spend a lot of time and effort trying to get other people to care about our feelings when we fail to do the same for ourselves. We shut ourselves down emotionally 
and expect some knight in shining armor to come and rescue us. This expectation is ridiculous because we are actually in possession of the key to the chains that hold us down. The only way to help ourselves grow emotionally and to maintain stable emotional health is to start caring about our feelings. And to do that, this process must happen in three phases. Phase one, correctly identifying your feelings. A lot of us have negative emotional flare-ups, but we tend to focus more on the circumstances that created the flare-ups rather than our reaction to those circumstances. From my understanding, emotions are the symptoms of what is going on in the inside of our heads mentally. When you get a cold, you manifest symptoms like fever, headache, and so on. To treat it, you don't start chasing the environmental factors that probably led you to your cold. Instead, you focus your treatment on what is going on with your body. Emotional self-care works in the same way because when you have an emotional flare-up, whether negative or positive, you must try to identify what you are feeling and why you are feeling it and then determine the next course of action to ensure that you are in a more positive emotional state. We should aspire to manifest more positive emotional flare-ups than negative ones. That is the end goal. I think it should be. I am not saying that life is meant to be a bed of roses. That is unrealistic. I am saying that when you build your emotional health through self-care, you reach a point where there is very little in life that will cause you to break to a point where you feel that life is no longer worth it. This point is called emotional resilience, and it is at the core of everything we are going to talk about in this book. Phase 2. Nurture Your Feelings I struggled with this phase for the longest time because of my one-tracked mind. I assumed that nurturing my feelings was akin to fanning the flames of a burning bush, letting it grow, burn, and eventually consuming you. As I reflect on my thought from some years ago, I have to admit that I was kind of crazy. Thankfully, Contrary to my crazy world of imagination, it simply means understanding what you are feeling and understanding which actions will pacify you. Let me break that down. I struggled with anger a lot. As a black woman living in a world that is clouded by racism, it is difficult not to be angry. One moment you're enjoying life, and then some person or event comes and squashes that moment like a bug because of their prejudices against your skin color. Worse still, you feel helpless to react. That sense of helplessness feeds anger, and I had a lot of it. When I realized that I had to learn to nurture my feelings, I kept thinking, am I supposed to grow this anger? Thankfully, I didn't act on that line of thought. Instead, I sat down and I processed my anger. Beyond the helplessness, I needed to understand why I was angry. This helped me realize that my anger was mostly because I felt like my rights were being violated. It was during this process that I also understood that anger is not the negative emotion we have painted it out to be. It is the way you act when you're angry that brings about negativity. When I understood that my fundamental rights as a human being were being trampled on and that this is what inspired my anger, I was able to channel that rage into more positive forms that yielded better results. This did not happen overnight. These actions pacified my anger. And I learned to embrace my anger because it made me more aware of myself as a woman. Through it, I understood the things I could tolerate in a relationship. 
It also helped me build clearer boundaries in my relationships. We'll get into this later. By nurturing your emotions, you develop a better understanding of yourself, which will in turn help you build better relationships with others. Phase 3. Conscious Effort This phase is present from the moment you decide to practice emotional self-care because it requires conscious effort. I am sad to say this, but the reality is that a lot of us are not raised with the knowledge of emotional self-care. We are groomed to survive the physical hardships of this world. But most of us are not lucky enough to have the kind of foundation that helps us prioritize our emotional health. And so, to get into the practice of emotional self-care, we need to make a conscious effort. Another reason conscious effort is important is because of our mental programming. We see the world through our society's lens which also influences our perception of self. However, nine times out of ten, we are not who society says we are. It is our duty to take the time to get to know ourselves, understand our visions, and build our goals. All this requires a level of self-awareness and conscious effort to make it happen. As you become more self-aware, you still need to apply more effort to get rid of the preconceived notions you have about how life is supposed to be or how you are supposed to react emotionally in different situations. For example, as black women, we are conditioned to believe that a relationship where love hurts is the one that proves your womanhood. This should never be the case. We deserve men who love us, respect us, and treat us like the queens that we are. However, if you don't make the conscious effort to apply this knowledge in your relationship with yourself as well as the ones you have with other people, you find yourself repeating old negative patterns that bring pain and hurt. How does emotional self-care impact us? From my personal experience, I didn't start living, and I mean really living, until I started practicing emotional self-care. Up until that point, I felt as though I was living my life for other people on their terms. I was so afraid to write a book because I was worried about what other people were going to think about me. I stopped myself from taking risk and going on adventures because I allowed the views and opinions of other people to dictate what should or shouldn't be done with my life and my money. But this is just scratching the surface of what you stand to gain when you imbib the culture of emotional self-care. There are so many benefits, but I'm going to focus on three of them. Number one, freedom to be you. We all know those crazy house rules. Girls should be this, girls should not do that, and so on. With emotional self-care, you can break free from those stupid rules and focus on yourself. It is through this that you can understand what your true limitations are and, most importantly, unveil your amazing potential. When you invest in your emotional health, you cast yourself in a new light where you find that those things that were thrust on you or taken away from you because of your gender might hold the key to unlocking the life you dream of. Sometimes, the freedom you gain is simply finding validation in your emotional expressions. You may discover that you are not the crazy girlfriend they said you were. You were simply expressing your emotional need, which is crucial to your existence in any relationship. Number two, 
Emotional Intelligence Emotional intelligence goes beyond your ability to recognize other people's emotions. How you act on the knowledge that you have defines the level of your emotional intelligence. Through emotional self-care, you are able to develop a deeper understanding of emotions, and this gives you a great ability to connect with people who might be going through similar circumstances. And it is through these connections that you are able to develop deeper bonds with people, giving you the chance to build more sustainable relationships. Number three, self-awareness. Without proper emotional self-care, it is almost impossible to determine how well you know yourself. If you simply accept the labels that people throw on you, based on their limited understanding of who you are, you are depriving yourself of the opportunity to explore the depths of your personality and everything that comes with being you. One major contributor to poor self-esteem is an absence of self-awareness. When you don't know who you are, you accept whatever is given to you, and often you get the crumbs that fall off the table. This negativity impacts your self-esteem. Why is emotional self-care crucial for a better life as a black woman? The crusade for better emotional self-care for black women should have started hundreds of years ago. Right now, as the world veers into chaos thanks to the raging pandemic and other disturbing social factors, it is even more important for us black women to band up together and look inwards for the solutions that the world needs today. The starting point for any tangible solution in any given society is self-reflection. Being a black woman in today's world means a lot of things to different people. But factually speaking, our role in society is crucial. We hold up families and empires, and their continued existence is dependent on us getting it right with ourselves. We have put everyone else ahead of ourselves, and this has been to our detriment. We have become more broken than ever, and broken people only end up breaking other people. Through emotional self-care, we can start pulling those pieces back together and mending those areas of our lives that require it. We need deep healing in our community. And as women of color, that inner hurt has a lot to do with the negative messages we have been raised with or around. Through conscious efforts on our part, we can become more self-aware. This will help us grow into our power and potential. And through this power, we can begin initiating the transformation we want to see in the world around us today. It is time to come out of denial. It is time to shed the lies. But most importantly, it is time to take up our rightful places in society. And the fact is, we can only do that from an emotional, healthy place. Having this in mind, let's explore emotional health in detail.